Hello and welcome back to Tips and Tricks for Teachers. This playlist contains videos that empower educators with helpful teaching ideas as well as professional development tips and techniques. If you haven't watched any of our previous videos, you can do so immediately by clicking on the i button to see the complete playlist. But please wait until the end of this video to do so. In our previous video, you learned how to write amazing sentences by using the wonderful sentence stretching strategy. In this video, we'll continue the focus on communication by focusing on improving writing skills or written proficiency. Let's get started. Like any other professional, teachers too need to continuously improve and upgrade their communication skills because they interact with many different groups of people including parents, students and colleagues. Written skills are as crucial as spoken fluency but often get overlooked or dismissed. Many teachers also incorrectly assume that good writing skills are inherited or are very difficult to learn. Sorry, that's not true at all. The key to improving writing skills is by following a set of steps. It's as simple as that. Let's take a look at these top three steps. Step one, write for your audience. Before you begin to write, ask yourself who is the audience who's going to read this piece and then begin writing. The style, tone, vocabulary and language will all vary and should vary depending on your audience. Formal language is very different from informal language. Step number two, devote extra time to catching punctuation mistakes. And to make it easy for you to catch those punctuation mistakes, we have compiled a list of the most common errors made. One, incorrect or unnecessary use of apostrophes, such as it is all yours or 10 rupees off. Whose bag is this? An apostrophe is used to show the possessive form not for plurals. They are also used for contractions such as shouldn't, don't, etc. Use the apostrophes correctly. 2. Using unnecessary quotation marks such as this is the best lunch in Bangalore. Remember, quotation marks are used only when we are quoting something or someone. If all you want to do is emphasize, use bold or underline. Number 3. Missing commas. I went to the mall but did not feel well, so I came back home. Speak the sentence aloud and take note of any breaks in your speech, natural breaks. Insert commas when you pause or when you change gears within a sentence. 4. Too many commas. I went to the mall, but it was closed, so I took an auto and went to Madhu's place to have tea. Your eyes are the best judge. Replace commas with full stops to make separate sentences wherever needed or try using a semicolon when appropriate. Five, too many exclamation marks. My students are the best. They work so hard. They are so diligent. Exclamation marks overflowing are overwhelming to the reader and actually make your writing lose its significance. Exclamation marks are like salt. You must use just enough. And most often, one exclamation mark is all that is needed or necessary. 6. Using its instead of its. One of the most common mistakes. Its is a contraction or a short form of it is or it has. We use this only when we mean to say it is. Don't look into its eyes. It's a very beautiful day today. Inserting a space before any punctuation mark. Insert a single space after a punctuation mark, not before. Step number 3. Proofread. Proofreading is the act of reading any completed written work to find and correct errors. This includes grammar, spelling mistakes, punctuation, and sentence construction. Proofreading is probably the most critical step in improving upon one's writing. And here are some steps to help you know how to make your proofreading efficient. One, check the various parts or sections. Check the various sections of your written work. Is there a good flow and sequence? Do they relate to one another very well? Step two. Check alignment to the focus, goal or topic. Do the various sections in your work relate back to the main idea or topic? 
Step 3. Check the data. If you've stated any facts or data, double check to ensure they are accurate. If you've cited or quoted someone, do enough research to check if the person to whom the quote is attributed is actually the right one. Step 4. Read aloud and review. A simple but excellent way to catch errors in sentence construction is by reading your work aloud so that you can hear how it sounds. Step 5. Look for patterns of mistakes. If you know that you make spelling mistakes more than anything else, look out for these. Identify and catch your own patterns of mistakes. Step 6. Proofread when you are most alert. For some, this could be early morning. For others, this may be late at night. Step 7. Ask someone else to proofread. Get another set of eyes to review your work. It is amazing how many errors others can spot in your work. Step 8. Review, revise, pause, repeat. Proofreading cannot be completed in one go. Review once, make edits, take a break and then repeat the process a couple of times on different days so that you end up catching different mistakes. Like any other skill, written proficiency can be improved with practice and effort. Follow this sequence of steps to improve your writing skills and wow your audience no matter who they are. Happy writing! Thank you for watching. Please show us your support by liking, sharing and subscribing to our channel. And please do keep coming back for more videos on tips and tricks for teachers. Happy teaching!